Hello fellow translators and Happy New Year! Happy Lunar New Year, Happy Solar New Year, Happy all the New Years. It's um, been a while since I've chatted with you and so I won't waste too much time with the introduction. More specifically, I wanted to chat with you about something that by far has been the topic that I've received the most questions about in the past few weeks, I'd say. And this has to do with, well, chat GPT and AI and how AI pertains to translation, etc, etc, etc. So I wanted to discuss this a little bit, but I'm not going to discuss it. I actually asked a friend of mine who is a translator but also a professional videographer to uh, try to do a video because I thought it would be more professional if a professional person did a video. And, uh, and her name is Yvonne, and so I'm going to let her discuss um, Translation AI briefly with you guys. And, um, and then, yeah, at the end of her video, she introduces herself a bit. And then after that, I'm going to add in my two cents because I do want to add in my two cents after it's done. But without any further ado, I'll let the professional, I'll let Yvonne take it over, and, uh, and I'll see you in, in a few. Hi, I'm Yvonne, and I'm here to discuss AI and more specifically how it pertains to translation. Let's leave aside all the mistakes and problems we still see with translation AI. What if this technology becomes 100% perfect one day? Will translators still have a job? Well, let's look at how translation AI works. In essence, it uses something called Natural Language Processing, NLP. NLP combines computational linguistics with statistical, machine learning, and deep learning models. You'll notice the word in common here is learning. And that is important because NLP has to learn in order to improve. However, this means that every type of text used for any type of AI will end up in a database somewhere. As you can imagine, if companies value their privacy, they might have a problem with this. I would think most banks, law firms, hospitals, governments, companies, schools, and many other types of organizations probably don't want all of their information sitting on a bunch of databases available to the highest bidder. So these companies and organizations will still be employing real translators for a long time to come, no matter how good the technology gets. By the way, between you and me, it's odd how it always seems to be people who have nothing to do with translation who keep saying AI will take over. I'd like to think we translators know better. Oh, and by the way, you have probably realized that I'm not real either. Robert thought it would be interesting to see how well an AI person could discuss AI technology. But don't worry, the script was written by Robert. And he's very human. Anyway, as he would say, Save Doom. So what did you guys think? Um, I thought it would be interesting to uh, get some AI technology to discuss AI and see how that went. And I was sort of impressed. Like, obviously, if you kind of know what you're looking for, if you look at her, you can sort of tell that it's not real. But I think if you're not paying too much attention, and probably if the subject hadn't been AI, then maybe it could have seemed real. And by the way, just in case seeing that video worries you, I have a, a bet going on, a bet with a friend of mine, a friend of mine who works in movies. And uh, that bet is that AI will take over his job, i.e. actors and actresses, before it takes over my job, i.e. translation. And I think that video of Yvonne explaining stuff is a good illustration of this. This is just something, you know, that I can access off the internet and, um, and the technology is quite good. So I think in terms of the professionals and the advances they're making in making movies, I think we're going to get a lot further ahead with stuff like that than we ever will with translation. But anyway, you know, I paid for the technology for a month, so if you want me to do another video on something using her, I mean, I probably will just because I want to experiment around and play around. But yeah, that brings me back to AI, and that's why, A, I'm not too worried about AI taking translators' jobs anytime soon, but B, I think it's important as translators not to ignore the technology and say we hate it, we don't want it, and be complete Luddites about it. But I think it's important to actually try to keep up with it because if it does benefit anyone, I think it'll benefit us translators who actually know what we're doing more than anyone else. And uh, so I do think it is important to sort of keep up with it and uh, you know follow along with what's going, maybe experiment around with it a bit. And uh, so you can understand its shortfalls and, uh, and its strengths as well and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, but the short answer is in the near future, I wouldn't worry too much about it taking our jobs. I think we're going to see a lot more. And we already are seeing, you know, MTPE jobs, some 
better quality or worse quality than others. But uh, yeah, we're seeing more and more of that. But uh, yeah, just briefly, that was pretty much it. And uh, I hope uh, you found it interesting. By the way, all this stock of AI, this, well, obviously I'm not AI, but also this background isn't fake. It looks so fake when I look at it in this video, but here, just a second. Anyway, I just wanted to point out that's a real bookshelf behind me, like, but for some reason the background looks so fake when I do this. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. Uh, and so let me know your thoughts on AI uh, because I'm curious. Otherwise, I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Savedum.